We're asked to determine all the critical points of the function f of x comma y, then determine if each point represents a relative maximum, relative minimum, or a saddle point. To do this, the first step is to determine the critical numbers, which are where the first order partial derivatives are both equal to zero or do not exist. And then step two is to perform the second partials test, where we determine the value of d using this formula here, using the second order partials, then using the sine of d, as well as the sine of the second order partial with respect to x, we can determine whether the point represents a relative minimum, relative maximum, a saddle point, or if the test is inconclusive. Let's begin by determining all the partial derivatives that we need to determine the relative extrema. So let's first find the first order partial with respect to x, which means we differentiate f with respect to x, treating y as a constant. The derivative of x squared with respect to x is 2x minus the derivative of xy with respect to x, treating y as a constant, which gives us one times y or just y, giving us minus y. And then the derivative of 2y squared with respect to x is equal to zero because we treat y as a constant. And now let's find the second order partial with respect to x, which means we differentiate 2x minus y with respect to x, treating y as a constant. The derivative of 2x with respect to x is two, and then minus the derivative of y with respect to x is zero because we treat y as a constant. Let's also find the mixed order partial of f with respect to x, then with respect to y, which means we differentiate 2x minus y with respect to y, treating x as a constant. The derivative of 2x with respect to y is zero, because we treat x as a constant, minus the derivative of y with respect to y, which gives us minus one or negative one. And now let's find the first order partial with respect to y, so we differentiate x squared minus xy plus two y squared with respect to y, treating x as a constant. The derivative of x squared with respect to y is equal to zero, treating x as a constant, minus the derivative of xy with respect to y, treating x as a constant, which gives us negative x times one, or negative x, plus the derivative of two y squared with respect to y, treating x as a constant, which gives us plus four y. And now we also need the second order partial with respect to y, which means we differentiate negative x plus four y with respect to y, treating x as a constant. The derivative of negative x with respect to y is zero. The derivative of four y with respect to y is four. And now to find the critical numbers, we need to determine where the first order partial derivatives are both equal to zero or do not exist. In this case, we need to solve the system of equations 2x minus y equals zero and negative x plus four y equals zero. Let's go ahead and use the method of substitution by solving this first equation for y. If we add y to both sides of the equation, we have two x equals y and now we'll substitute two x for y in the second equation and solve for x. Performing the substitution gives us negative x plus four times y, which we know is equal to two x equals zero. Simplifying on the left, we have negative x plus eight x, which is seven x, giving us seven x equals zero. Dividing both sides by seven, we have x equals zero. And of course, if x equals zero, then y is equal to two times zero, which is also zero. So we only have one critical point. The critical point has an x-coordinate of zero, a y-coordinate of zero, and to find the z-coordinate, we need to determine the function value f of zero comma zero. Well, substituting zero for x and zero for y, we're going to get a function value of zero because we have zero squared minus zero times zero plus two times the square of zero, which again is zero. So the critical point is the point of the origin, zero comma zero comma zero. The next step is to determine the value of d as well as the value of the second order partial with respect to x. Let's do this on the next slide. And to save some time, I've already set this up. Again, the critical point is zero comma zero comma zero. The value of d is equal to the second order partial with respect to x evaluated at zero comma zero times the second order partial with respect to y at zero comma zero 
minus the square of the mixed partial with respect to x and then y at zero comma zero. Looking at our partial derivatives from the previous slide here above, the second order partial with respect to x is equal to the constant two. The second order partial with respect to y at zero comma zero is equal to the constant four. And the mixed order partial with respect to x and then y at zero comma zero, which is here, is equal to the constant negative one. So we have minus the square of negative one, which gives us eight minus one, which is equal to seven. And now we have all the information we need. We know d is equal to seven, so d is greater than zero. And we also know the second order partial with respect to x is equal to two, which is also greater than zero. So looking at our notes, because d is greater than zero, and the second order partial with respect to x is also greater than zero, we know we have a relative minimum. So to conclude, we have zero comma zero comma zero represents a relative minimum. Before we go, let's verify this graphically. Using the calcplot 3D grapher, I've already graphed the function f of x comma y as well as the point zero comma zero. The point is here in red, and notice how we can see that the point is a low point on the graph, verifying we do have a relative minimum. Actually, in this case, because it's the lowest point on the entire surface, we could also classify the point as an absolute minimum. I hope you found this helpful.